From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Hey guys, Bullhorn Betty here. We're going to be going over uh, several case updates and then we're going to be discussing the Sebastian Rogers case um, a little more in depth. It's nice to see you guys here. I turned off um, subscriber only comments so you guys should be able to comment. It's nice to see you. Where are my glasses? I can't even see. Can't even see who's in. Hey guys, it's nice to see you. We're going to be starting off with Alec Murdaugh today. Alec Murdaugh, many of you know, he went uh, to court. He was found guilty of uh, a, a double murder and he had a litany of financial crimes. Well, um, this lady right here is Becky Hill, and she is, she was the clerk of Colton County, and she presided or was in the uh, court chambers with the judge, with the jury, out there on the floor during this trial, and a lot of stuff happened, and they're saying that she... Uh, misused her office for a variety of things. She wrote a book, Behind the Walls of Justice. And Alec Murdaugh is now potentially going to be getting a, a, another trial. It's possible. The highest court of South Carolina has decided to take up Alec Murdaugh's appeal related to the jury tampering aspect of his trial. And, and it's related in a direct result of Becky Hill's work. So we don't know what's going on, but it is going to the highest court. Hey, Jalen, it's nice to see you. And we'll see what happens there. Now, there's a lot of other things going on. Before we get and get started with um, Sebastian Rogers, I did want to talk about this particular case right here. This is Dee Warner. She disappeared April 25th. 2021 and hadn't been seen since. Many people believed her cop husband was responsible for her disappearance, the family, everybody, but nobody had enough evidence to go after him. Well, her family decided to go to court and have the courts determine her as deceased, and her husband ended up going to jail in November 2023 uh, related to her death. She still was never found. Well, as of late last night, they found her on her cop husband's property, and now she is heading to have a, an autopsy done to confirm that it is her, but with it being on Dale Warner's property, th this is more than likely, without a doubt, D. Warner. We want to keep our thoughts and prayers with her family, obviously her grandchildren, and um, just pray for them today. Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee, where he resided with his mother, Katie Proudfoot, and his stepfather, Christopher Proudfoot. 
And he apparently, according to everything we're reading, is that Chris Proudfoot was not anywhere around the home during this weekend. Now, we've had some um, some people come out and say there was a poker game, this, that, and the other. There's no way to corroborate that. I don't know where that came from. I can tell you that from everything I've heard from the neighbors, the fact that we have video surveillance in and around that community, and it didn't identify seeing Chris Proudfoot at all that week, and it is my belief until some uh, information that can be corroborated comes forward that he was not there that weekend. Uh, Christopher Proudfoot was w- working about three and a half hours away in Memphis on the St. Jude's project. And I believe he may have came home that night because there's some weird things going on inside and outside the home the night that Sebastian Rogers disappeared. Right now, Everything that we know has come from Chris, Katie, or Seth. We've had very limited information come from law enforcement about the Sebastian Rogers case. What we did learn from law enforcement, though, was impactful. What do I mean by that? Law enforcement basically has told the public before they stop communicating with the public that there's no evidence that this boy walked out of the home. We have been up and down whether or not Sebastian Rogers actually physically walked out of the home on his own. Some people believe he was coaxed out of the home, but no matter how we look at it, this is a a highly functioning autistic boy that has tics. You know, he has things that he doesn't like. For example, he does not like dirt, yet he went outside without shoes. He does not like bugs, not even a fly. Okay, he can't even stand to fly, yet he went out in the middle of the night without even so much as a jacket on. He has, he's adamant about having his, his uh, Twitch switch and his cell phone. He left the home without his switch, his cell phone, or his gadgets, and he left without any food, money, or snacks. This boy has not been heard or seen since the day that he was reported missing. Many people believe that they had saw somebody similar to him in North Carolina, but that came to be a person that was very similar to his appearance, but not Sebastian Rogers. So far, what we've learned from law enforcement is that they cannot locate how this boy left the house, and if he did leave the house, which direction he went. Moreover, With all the surveillance and all the ring doorbell cameras and all the CCTV footage on businesses and gas stations, nobody saw him. Nobody saw him. Since this time, uh, Chris and Katie have both been pretty much MIA. Uh, Katie has... When when searches was going on around their home two weeks after he disappeared... Her and Chris Proudfoot get into their their truck and their camper and take off for Mississippi. We're learning the Yogi Bear campground was most likely not the camping ground that Christopher Proudfoot was working or living at while working on the Memphis St. Jude's project. But again, we don't know. I can tell you that we are looking into Christopher Proudfoot. We're looking into his um, his background. We're looking into his high school. We're looking into the people that may have known him just to kind of give us an, a little insight, a little further insight into Chris. Because let's face it, what we as the public have seen on all of these social media pages when they were going up there and giving interview after interview was not something that... We believe that Chris was this nice, you know, stepfather of the year kind of guy. Even this photo, I like to judge, okay? I'm a judgmental woman, right? People judge me, I judge them. He looks like a punk even in this this photo right here, you know? I know, Jenny, right? So aliens took him. And and that's kind of where we're getting at. But, you know, getting back to the D. Warner um, case... The, the interesting thing is her family ended up having to go to court to have her uh, determined as deceased. Now, this usually in Tennessee, a person is, is basically established as deceased after seven years. But 
This shows you that families can come together and go to court and force the court's hand before that statutes of limitations run out. And that's exactly what they did. And I think that's what got her husband, Dale Warner, in jail a lot sooner than he would have been without um, the pushing of the family. Now, he's expected back into court uh, in September. But I think we can learn a lot from this case because even though this was an adult and Sebastian's a kid, he still has his father rooting for him. He still has somebody. You know, this is much different than we had with Summer Wells where both of the parents are under a cloud of suspicion. Here we have a set of parents, the mom and the stepdad, that are under a super cloud of suspicion. But over here we have Seth Rogers, which many people, whether they beat up on him or for whatever stupid reason or not, He's not, he's not guilty of this crime. He's got a, a, a rock-solid alibi. But the good news is, is he's fighting for his son. So that means he is the one that can be brought forward. He is the one that can go to the courts and demand that they do certain things later down the road, if it so justifies. As you guys know, Seth Rogers believes that his son is alive and healthy, and he's just wanting to bring his son home. It has been six months. We have a, a, a prayer vigil that's going to be going on on August 24th, just in a few days, this upcoming Saturday, right? This next following Saturday, we're going to be there. Um, I'm going to be present at this vigil as well. I believe that we're still looking for a um, uh, a leader and a road captain uh, for the, the motorcycle. So if you guys are out there in the Clarksville area or you would love to come and support this related to Sebastian Rogers, please consider coming out and supporting this. If you would like to be part of the ride, please do so. Um, there are going to be any profits that are derived like for, through the donations and stuff on this particular day are going to go to a pet rescue. If you know anything about Sebastian Rogers, he loves pets. He loves pets. And you got to understand that ever since Christopher Proudfoot came into Sebastian's life, he has been stripped of everything, including his beloved cats, because Chris is allergic to cats. So Sebastian had to give up his cats. A lot of people don't realize that Katie's connection with Chris and whether or not she would be willing to do the unthinkable to appease her husband, I can assure you I believe she would. Did you know that Chris Proudfoot wouldn't date her until she quit smoking? Many of the people in my audience that smoke understand how difficult that is. And she was able to accomplish it because she wanted Chris Proudfoot so bad that she quit smoking for him. Her son had to give up his beloved animals for Chris. So when Chris demanded that Katie take either Chris Proudfoot or Sebastian, he gave her an ultimatum. It's either your son, your art hard son, or it's me. And shortly after that argument, and on the eight year anniversary of her filing for divorce, Sebastian is gone and never seen again. Where is Sebastian Rogers, Katie? Christopher Proudfoot? Where is Sebastian Rogers? You hold the key. You and you alone hold the key. We went through the interview, some of the fir first interviews. Well, we went through the interview, the mainstream media interview, the first one, which we dubbed the green shirt interview. And we discussed a little bit about it this last night whenever I um, came on here for a little bit. And we were talking about, we've watched these interviews over and over again. And when we start getting to a case and the case starts getting stale, I go back to the beginning and I start listening to the stuff over and over again. And yes, I've watched it many times. But this time I wasn't really focusing on what they were saying. I was looking at how... 
Chris and Katie reacted together. And the one thing that I found out is it doesn't appear that they are in a very loving relationship. This is why I say that. If you go back to the interviews that we actually see their face, like Chronicles of Olivia interview, uh, we have the um, green shirt interview, which is on the um, uh, with a, a news organization. I want to think. I think it's WSMV, I, possibly. Either way, what you see is they don't even touch each other. They don't console each other. They don't even look at each other. It's very robotic. It's very cold. Even when they talk about Sebastian, they have no emotion. If you were to take the sound away and just watch them, like especially in the green shirt interview, you will find out Hold on a second. Okay. Well, John James, you know what you can do? You can kiss my white breaded little bootay. Have a good day. I don't like people coming in the chat. It's a privilege to be in my chat. It's not a right. I want to make sure that's very clear here on, on every platform. Um, if you don't like it, be an adult and leave or <laughs> scroll up. Okay. But, you know, one thing you noticed about Chris and Katie is just how there's, there's, there doesn't appear to be any love between them. They don't touch each other. And again, it's, it's hard because you would think that this lady at eight days of missing her son would be freaking out. You know what I'm saying? Would be absolutely freaking out and, and crying and hysterical, kind of like what we saw with Riley Strain's mom. You know, and that is not the case here. But by the 20th day, by the, the Chronicles of Olivia interview, you would think that this woman is about to lose her ever loving mind. And she's not. She's just sitting there talking about this like it's no big deal. I, I got to say, just their behavior alone, just how... They, they, they seem so cold. They seem so strategic in their words. They seem so robotic. They don't want to touch each other. They don't even want to act like that they give a darn about each other or this boy. If you just look at their bodies, between Chris and Katie, it appears that there is something majorly wrong between them over and above Sebastian Rogers. I have never, can you imagine missing your child, your child, whether, whether your child ran away or not, and you're sitting there at, talking to news and, and, and your, your significant others, not even rubbing your shoulders, not even holding your hands, not even, you know, consoling you and, and, and telling you you're doing great. You just keep going, you know, cause you have to be so super upset. You're getting none of that with Chris and Katie. So although we've listened to these interviews over and over again, go back and watch them. Like really pay attention to them and their connection with one another. It's kind of weird. Also reminds me of Madeline Soto's mom. She was weird too. Yeah, point blank they are guilty, Lavender says. Yeah, something absolutely without a doubt happened. I, I mean, you know, they can sit there and, and, and try and try everything under the sun. It's not going to stop my opinions. It's not going to stop me talking about this case. It's not going to stop me going out there and searching. It's not going to stop me from doing my part. I really don't care about Chris and Katie. I think that they are, they are uh, as evil as evil come. I have never in my life seen a woman birth a child, want custody of that child. That child disappears under their watch and they're like, well, you know. I just want to get my life back. You know, this is, you know, this is, this is really miserable for me. So we just need to, you know, get things back to, we just need to, you know, push them aside. And I just need my stepdaughter to come here and we're just going to have fun with the stepdaughter. It's not a big deal. You know, no, no, no worries. He's just, he just ran away. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll be back one of these days. I've never seen parents like this. 
The only time I've ever seen parents so cold and calculated like this was Trezell and Jacqueline West. Now, that was with um, Oren and Orson West. Uh, there were two brothers that were adopted by Jacqueline and Trezell West. And when they were, when their, they reported their children missing because it was coming up to Christmas, and a lot of people don't know that when children are in the foster family or being adopted, uh, depending on how those things were set up through the state, the family gets to see those children around holidays, you know, to give them Christmas gifts or to stay, you know, in contact with their their family that are, are living with somebody else, like the grandparents get to see them, the aunts, the uncles. And so we see a lot of this around the holidays where people are reported missing because they have to they have to justify why they can't let these people see them now, you know? Otherwise, the family is going to want, want to see the child. And I think that was the situation that was coming up for Orson and um uh, Orin and Orson West. And they reported both of those children missing. Well, their family, the biological family, didn't believe uh, Jacqueline and, and Trezell. And they were out there screaming. And, and, and Jacqueline and Trezell have masks over their face. You know, he's got his, his arms under his pits like this. And he's like, you know, well, I understand people have their opinions. And it's just not like that. And I can understand why they're, they're, they're you know, looking at us. They were in our care. You know, he was just giving giving the we know that this doesn't look good speech right but it's not us and it reminded me a lot of what chris said you know especially in the green shirt interview and the chronicles of olivia interview kp was really doing an interview on tuesday with a youtuber i oh, well i'd like to see that I don't see her going and doing any type of, of, of interview on a YouTube channel by herself. Chris will take over every bit of it. You can't get Katie to speak. I, I, would, be, I would be flabbergasted if she actually goes on a YouTube channel alone. I would be absolutely flabbergasted. You got to remember, why is Chris there talking about this case? He wasn't even home at the time. How does he have so much information for being three and a half hours away, but the only person that's so elusive in what he did between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. on the 26th? We know what Katie did. We know what Seth did. Why, why is Chris so cryptic when he was so far away from than everybody else? He's putting himself in the bullseye. By doing crap like that. I, I, I'm curious. So if, if you do, um, Nikki, if you do have the link for this interview on Tuesday, send it to bullhornbetty at gmail.com. I'm interested in watching it. I'm interested in hearing what has to, what has to be said. I'm, I'm interested. Let me know. Because I know in the bottom of the pits of my being that they know what happened to him. I know. And they're wanting us to disregard our own intuition and our own common sense to believe their horse crap when they keep changing their story. How many times? I mean, we've got what if we took, took every single variation of their story? I think we're up to 30 different stories at this this point or, or darn, you know, at least 24 or more different stories that we've heard Chris and Katie, you know, the variation of these stories. He has to have full control. Absolutely. Sebastian is on, the, hold on, what does it say? Sebastian is on the way to his job somewhere out there underneath something. Oh, it's so sad, yeah. The way CP acts online says all we need to know. Absolutely. And first impressions are lasting impressions. And he kept trying, you know what? I remember um, one of the things that he said in the green shirt interview, I just remember watching it just yesterday when we were doing a live on my show on my YouTube channel. And he says something to the effects of, I talk to, to Seth almost on a daily basis. And this kind of just was a red flag to me because I've covered so many abusive cases and so many uh, cases where there was SA involved and stuff like that. And the groomer of those essay allegations would always look like the good guy, you know, always want to make sure that he went out of his way to keep in contact with the family, you know, always impressing that he's this great guy, you know, and they do that by 
constantly staying in contact with them because what what good guy what bad guy would be talking to them so much right i feel like that in and of itself was manipulation onto seth because seth is is now because he's talking to chris he's formulating a bond with chris and he thinks chris is doing good for his son but they were still having issues going on behind the scenes for example every time seth was going over excuse me every time sebastian was going over to seth's house chris would call seth and want seth to punish sebastian for some stupid uh thing that that upset Chris. Like, Chris is always upset and always wanting to punish Sebastian. He's an autistic boy that sits at home all day. He doesn't run around. What possibly could this boy be doing that causes so much trouble where he is always in trouble at Chris and Katie's house? I mean, think about it. You guys get frustrated with your kids because they go out and they don't come home or they don't tell you where they're going or they come at, they come in after, after their curfew is done over and they're supposed to be home. Those are the kinds of things that you're getting upset with your child about. This is an autistic boy that doesn't go anywhere. He stays in his room. He stays to himself. He doesn't even have a, a freaking computer system. What? I want somebody to explain what possibly this boy could do so bad that he's always in trouble. Nobody can answer that for me. You know? He wanted Sebastian to be normal in his eyes. I know. He was trying to punish him punish him into normalcy. One of my um, subscribers over on my YouTube channel, we call her Lisa B. Always, she sent me an email and basically said that. He was trying to discipline, they were trying to discipline Sebastian into normalcy. He had a chromosome deletion program, or program. He had a chromosome deletion syndrome. He had other medical uh, stuff, including fluid on his brain, which, you know, his, his, his him hitting his head was a, a concern of all of his parents. You know, that's why he wasn't into major sports and stuff like that, where he could really have head-to-head -head contact injuries because of this fluid on his brain. He had autism. He probably had ADHD. Gosh knows what this child had going on with him. I don't think I clearly have a full understanding of all the ailments and disabilities that Sebastian had. But for the most part, even with all of that, he was still a high-functioning um, uh, autistic child uh, that was doing, you know, for, for the doing pretty well. Do you know Katie and Chris didn't even go that that vigil that we saw where Chris is leaning into Seth at his his truck and looks like he's screaming at him. Well, they left and went motorcycle shopping that afternoon while everybody was gathering for a prayer vigil. Katie and Chris wouldn't even stay there for the prayer vigil. Do you know that they gave Seth a a reward for um what was it? FFA Future Farms of America or some type of um um thing that he did online and Chris and Katie weren't even there to also accept that reward on their own son their missing son's honor because they're too busy buying a motorcycle or looking at motorcycles to me oh super receive is the YouTube Tuesday she is going oh I did not know Subaru Steve was going to have her on I don't I would be shocked Yes, I remember that. I remember that. How are they so cold? Go watch their videos. I, I Swamp Puppy? Swamp Puppy? I would suggest you go watch. Well, how are they not cold? I want you to go look at uh, Riley Strain's mom. Go, just go do a comparison. Do a quick comparison. Go up there and watch some videos on Riley Strain's mom. And go watch the videos on, on, on Katie Proudfoot. Uh, Katie Proudfoot's ice cold. They're so dead. I mean, even with Chronicles of Olivia, look at them. They're split apart. They're not even touching each other. They're like an arm's length away from each other to do the video. It, 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 they're cold. They're cold as ice. Usually at 20 days when you don't... I, I mean, I, Swamp Puppy, I'm curious. Do you have children... And how would you be 20 days after your child disappeared from your home and is never, ever seen again? I mean, I, I, I have a, a puppy, right? A puppy. And if my puppy disappeared tomorrow, I would lose my ever-loving stuff 
This is a puppy. This is not even a human being that I birthed out of my birth canal. This is a puppy. And I would be, my face would be full of tears. I would be an absolute utter wreck if something happened to my puppy and I didn't see my puppy again. So I don't understand. They are... I don't understand how you could say they're not cold. Please produce receipts. I could literally produce uh, five different videos that show how cold they are. I have receipts, so they say. You know? That's a great perspective. Beck Boo says, uh, Katie is so cold and CP is full of anger. That's a great description of that. KP shows no maternal feel feelings. CP says it will be a case study. It's weird how they act. It's weird how they act. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. They are cold, Betty. I am stating myself. I can't believe. Oh, how they. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I misunderstood that. Sorry. Sorry about that. I'll go full scorch earth over my kids, minors, adults, everything. I yeah, exactly, exactly. I got it. I got it. Thank you, Elisa. I wouldn't be able to function if something happened to one of my kids. I don't get them at all. It, 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 and, and not only that, but I, I'd like to see how she reacts as she's going on Subaru Steve's channel. I'd like to see how her, how she reacts. I mean, now we're almost six months in. You would think that she would be a blubbering mess, right? Not a stick figure. We'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. That's really the lineup that I had today. Um, we had, uh, let me see, do we have anything else? D. Warner, watch the D. Warner case. I think this is going to be interesting. I think we can use some of the stuff that this family did that might be able later down the road to help Sebastian and his father at some, at some point down the road. I really do. But again, at the end of the day, did Katie do the unthinkable? And I, I'm not going to sit there and, and, and deny my feelings or my opinions, and I believe she did. I believe she did. And just like you see right here, I believe Chris was the cleanup. So take it for what you will, guys. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. Happy Sunday. If you guys ever would like to come over and hang out with us, maybe you haven't been in church in a while. Uh, I go to a church called Commun uh, Countryside Christian Church. And it says online in the group of us from the coffee club are always over there every Sunday at like 9.05 in the morning. So maybe come over and check that out. Come hang out with the coffee club. God bless and have a great day. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. This will not be the last live we do. God bless.